Every Codex user knows the pain. You're deep in your flow, you're chasing a bug, you're almost done, and then boom. Hard limit reached. Come back next week. That hard wall? OpenAI just turned it into a speed bump. Over the past three weeks, they released three coordinated elements that work together to solve this problem and keep you coding from three to five times longer. Today, I'm showing you exactly how GPT-5-1's efficiency gains and the mini model that they just released, as well as on-demand tokens all combined together to make you be able to work all day long, every day, or at least that's their hope. And we're gonna take a look at how to use them strategically. The first change, GPT-5.1 does not overthink any longer. Now you might've heard that ChatGPT released a new model, 5.1, and it probably really got mired in all of this conversational, it's got a different attitude, it's a little bit more tunable for personality, but actually what they've done here is far more impressive if you're an engineer. The biggest culprit with 5.0 was it was a little bit flatter in the way that it applied thinking mode. So thinking was a little bit more standard and had a progressive change across the different thinking models, meaning if it needed to think a lot, it thought a lot. If it needed to think a little, it still thought a little too much. And in the middle, it definitely thought too much. And so in this chart, you can see what they've done is there's a 57% decrease in thinking for those tasks that are in the 10% amount of thinking that's required. Basically, that just means easy problems, they think less on them, much less, in fact. But you'll also see on the 90th percentile in this chart that hard problems, they think more. And so they've kind of reduced on the left, increased on the right in a major way. And that really ends up meaning tokens to us. Unless you're working on things that need very, very deep thinking, you're going to be saving tokens through the vast majority of the work that's occurring. The estimate is somewhere around an 80% token reduction on kind of coding, general coding tasks, on lower thinking tasks, and also uh, five times fewer tokens in general that are utilized. Now this should translate without doing anything else to both faster responses and longer ability to code before you hit that dreaded threshold. And buried in the release notes, they mentioned that they have a mini model with 5.1. They had a mini model with 5.0 as well. They've had mini models for a while, but this mini model is a little bit special. It actually is five times more efficient for token use. It is a smaller model or a, let's say a less performant model, a less intelligent model. However, you might look at that. Basically, it's they say something like the GPT-4.1 model or maybe the O3 model. So this is from a few months ago, three or four months ago, a model that we very likely would have been coding with if you were in the open AI space. That's what this mini model is all about. However, it is far cheaper now. It's a 25 cents per million versus $1.25 for the 5.1 codex model. And so there are codex variants of these mini models. We're going to look at that specifically because this is where we get a lot of our actual gains when we start talking about how to stay away from that dreaded wall. So let's dive into uh, codex itself here. Okay, if we start up Codex and we take a look at the models that they have, you'll see that there is the GPT-5.1 Codex models as we've seen before. You can select low, medium, and high. High now has a note here saying, high reasoning effort can quickly consume plus plan rates to kind of give you an indication. If you're starting to hit your thresholds, stay out of high unless you really need it. And when you need it, use it, but get back out of it kind of aggressively. But on top of that, you'll also see that you can select the 5.1 model itself, you don't have to use Codex variants, but there's the Codex Mini variant as well. If you go into the Codex Mini, it has two uh, levels of reasoning, both high and medium, medium being the default. And so the Codex Mini model is not there as your main coding model when you're in Codex. In fact, the Codex 5.1 uh, model that just released is now taken up to the 76th percentile in, in the SWE bench where uh, I think Sonnet 4.5 is at 77%, so it brings them right up on par. It really has increased the intelligence a bit. That's not their major story, so it's not something they're directly selling here. But the Codex model is definitely the one that you'll want to use for daily driver kind of use. However, if you are in your system and you do a status, you'll get to see how much context window you have remaining. And mine just flipped over, so I don't have anything to, to show here. But 
it will be a little bar chart to kind of show how much more you have. They have two basic windows. One is a five hour window. You get to use a certain amount of usage CPU uh, within a five hour window, and then you get limited. You also have kind of a weekly limit. Okay, so what I've decided to do is run the same request against all of the different models, the Codex models and the Codex mini models, high, medium, and low for each. I don't believe there's actually a low for code, Codex Mini Low. Uh, so I believe it ran the medium. In that case, it defaulted. I have a, a, a feeling. So what I'll take a look at is the Codex High information. But first, I wanted you to see kind of what we were asking for. So the request that I put in is I just wanted an architectural overview of the application that we're sitting in. This is an application that I've shared before. But what's important about it is that it has a multi-layer caching strategy. But it's a very clean kind of separation of caching, but hard to understand, and I don't have it documented here in the system. So what I've asked all of these models to do is go take a look and figure out what data is cached, how long it's cached, where are they populated, when does it refresh, what are the TTL rules, what's the logic, how does it behave, and if you can include a diagram that's helpful, these kinds of things. My theory here to some degree is, if you're going to have to use Mini at some point, how well does it understand a system that it needs to go interrogate? Because it will need that context to do all of its future work. If it can't do that, then pretty much everything downstream is questionable, right? So I just decided, why not throw this at the highest model that we've got, which is Codex High, as well as the Mini Low and Mini Medium. And we can kind of take a look and compare two of them just to see if we can tell a difference. While we're over here, I wanted to show you something. There's these log files as well as the essentially the output that I got from the system, the report that's being returned. But if we look at these logs, it will tell us the, what model it used. But if we go all the way to the bottom, what we're recording is how long it ran for and how many tokens it consumed to do that. And so this is GPT codex, GPT-51 codex high, and it took six minutes to do its work and 160,000 uh, tokens. And if we go to, let's say the mini medium, which is essentially the lowest mini model, and we look at the bottom for this guy, of course, same request, same project. It is taking half as long, three minutes, but it is using 400,000 tokens. And I wanted to point this out. This is when I was talking about earlier that we don't really pay for tokens, we pay for compute or really cost because these these mini model tokens are far, far cheaper, as we talked about, five times cheaper. Okay, so let's look at the outputs. We will look at the Codex High and the Mini Medium, because those are basically the highest we've got and presumably, essentially, the lowest we've got. So let's look at the Codex High first. It is by no stretch of the imagination, not surprisingly, the most impressive. Okay, so it gives us an overview of all of the different caching systems, what the layers are, what they store, um, if we scroll down, you'll see that we have the middle tier cache, the server cache, the Firebase cache, uh, shared Firestore service, a scheduling cache. Uh, then it goes through and it describes each one of these, I think, quite well to try to describe what's happening in them or when you miss something, how it handles it in more natural language. It was one of the things in the prompt I tried to say, make sure it's understandable from technical audiences and non-technical audiences. Um, and then it also gives us a very nice diagram. This is a embedded diagram inside of uh, Mermaid uh, that they can put in Markdown. This was nice. The diagram did not come through in the mini model, but I would say that's probably not terribly surprising. Let's look at the mini medium. All right, mini medium goes through the middle tier cache as we've seen, server cache, Firestore database, talks about a little bit of the difference, the six hour, 15 minute spread, 24 hour logic. So it kind of gets into some of this, the shared Firestore logic as well, which is an important distinction in there, um, goes through the data flow, where it comes from, the ESPN provider, Firestore, uh, data flows from the client to the API. So it really, I think, does a very good job. It is not quite as conversational. You might notice it doesn't feel the same. It's not trying its best to impart the information to me, but really like the weekly data persistence docs codifies the freeze windows, spreads are immutable once a game starts, entering records, uh, stops changing when a week finishes. This is not conversation, but it is clear. But actually, after seeing this document, I will say I do anticipate that it will work similar to the GPT-41 model, which was an excellent model. Maybe not ever that absolute cutting edge model that OpenAI wished they had, but as the mini model, five times cheaper, 
I mean, come on. Okay, last one, and for some of you, maybe the most important. And in fact, if you get stuck, it will be the most important for any of us. <laughs> if you get stuck in that example of, you get the hard wall that says, come back Monday and it's Thursday, this is your solution. If you go to Codex on the web, you'll see a settings, then you can go to usage. Once you're in here, you'll see your five hour limit that we were talking about and your weekly usage limit also. And it will let you know when that weekly usage limit is going to reset. Here are the special credits that we're looking for. If you hit plus on this special credit, credit, you can see that you can buy more messages. And at this point, once you get stuck at Codex, you can go beyond the rate limits. And this is that special unlock. For 40 bucks, you can get 250 to 1300 CLI or extension messages. And I kind of wish they would do a tighter job here of hel helping me understand is $40 another five hour uh, kind of plan or is it a weekly segment of data? That I wish they would tighten up a little bit because I, it's a lot of money to put down on faith that it's enough. But this is your unlock. If you're stuck and you're really in the flow and you're trying to move forward, this is your best friend. And frankly, I'm super happy to see that they put anything here because the hard limit is crazy. I think that this really shows that we're gonna be able to use Codex a little bit longer, hopefully. I would love to hear what your findings are if this is really the case or if you're immediately hitting the limit again. Oh, and I forgot to mention there's actually something neat that I believe at the 90% when you hit the 90% threshold in your five hour window or maybe in your weekly window, I'm not sure which one of those two windows couldn't verify it, you will get a message instead of just saying, sorry, you're almost out. It'll come back and say, do you want to switch to the mini model? Now, admittedly, again, I want to warn you, the mini model is a smaller model. If you're trying to do very sophisticated work, you'll have varying outputs and outcomes from that kind of work, I would guess. But I would also love to hear, is anybody just working in mini? That'd be fascinating. All right, well, thanks for coming along for the ride on this one, and I'll see you in the next one.